hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. How are you this morning? I am glad. What a beautiful day we have here. Absolutely gorgeous. We've even got a train running past in the background just to, <laughs> just to annoy me somewhat. Oh, and it's nine coaches long for those that are interested. Okay, right. This week's vlog is the long awaited sequel to my broadband rants. And I have to thank Doug Randall from Signet Aerials in Weymouth, who has been kind enough to supply the answers to those questions that I received some weeks ago. Now, whilst you won't see Doug, you will hear him um, because he'll be talking over some imagery and um, diagrams. However, he has said that should you wish to contact him, I can put his details in the description below of this video and you will be able to contact him direct. So, as I say, this is a, a little bit of a different a vlog, um, but it's nevertheless a very important one for those of us that live on board narrowboats. So let's get on with it. We have a mobile booster aerial which is not working and struggling with internet. Things that used to work okay and people would buy them for a reason back in the day doesn't hold true even a few years onward. So what, what was a good idea, not now, update to new and make sure it's 5G compatible, definitely. How can I be sure my antenna is always facing in the right direction? There isn't an ideal app. There's a, an app which is, uh, I think it's called Cell Tower. Now, this in its way, I think will be good if the boating community used it because there's a facility on, facility on it where it's picking up data from transmitters. So as you're driving along, going through the waterways, it will pick transmitters up or mobile masts, collect the data, and then you can just press a button and upload it, or it can be automatically uploaded. It'd be very useful if the community got together and used the same app. Um, because it will collect that information and then you can check that app to see where you are to see what mobile phone masks and coverage works. If any phone will be pinging out constantly saying, I'm here, anyone else here, anyone else? And if a mask will say, I'm here and you've got a connection, or I'm here and it's another mask. But this particular app, correlates that information and so where you're traveling it knows where you are and it can then say the strength of those towers in relation to where you are on the network what is the best aerial type recommended for mobile reception well there definitely isn't one Right, so what you need, and this comes back to your problem with uh, the 24-7 business. It's horses for courses. So if you were in a marina and you're there a lot of the time, and the signal is weak, then you would want a directional aerial. But again, you wouldn't want the most directional aerial because that's more like a TV aerial 
and it's not practical on a boat and it's two directional. So you want one a bit like you've got, which is the pointing A0001 cross. So that one is omnidirectional. So it mainly looks all around, but there's sharp points left and right uh, where it doesn't transmit. So it isn't circular like you'd hope. It's, it's kind of a, almost bum shaped. So it's sort of round in and back round. Uh, so that's what I forget who, who mentioned it to you, but they said about twisting the aerial and it helps. That's the reason because the side lobes disappear. So you turn your area around and it focuses better. On a, on a directional aerial, same shape. Uh, so the version two from pointing. So it's got a, it's more sectional. So it will look at about 70 degrees overall. So where it's pointed to, it will pick up pretty much in focus over 70 degrees. But of course, as soon as you move, it's going to need turning. So if you're constantly on the move, you couldn't use it in your situation because it'd be always looking forward that section. And if the transmitter's over here, it's, it's missed it. Doug's recommendation for those who want to vlog on the move. Well, this idea is having two separate uh, dipole type aerials with a single cable coming out of each, opposite ends of the, the boat. And then uh, as long as it, there's a really good spacing between them, and then the, obviously the other important thing is whatever length of cable is utilized, which would probably be a 10 meter cable, I would think, have it the same both ends. Don't have one five meter, one 10 meter. They need to be the same length cable. So then both ends of those aerial, the aerial cable will go back into your ether. Now, if you imagine you're going, as you do, through the countryside or under a, a bridge, the forward end is going to lose its signal because it's under the bridge. The back end isn't because it's still out in the open. This is all theoretical, but it, it's like it works. <laughs> um, and it, as you come out of the tunnel with the front end, you enter with the back end of the boat. Front end's then exposed with it, its aerial and the back end gets shielded. So in your particular situation, that would be good and it would also work in a marina as well um, and there's always going to be dead spots on the canal system but like i said they're not going to waste electricity and power and money transmitting to sheep and goats and stuff it's going to be focused on population it should theoretically should be better with 5g but who knows is it better to use an independent router or one supplied by the network carrier? Well, almost certainly an independent one will be better because that's what they make. That is their purpose in life. And they want to make the best of whatever they do. Um, I've always found people like Netgear are good, but uh, Huawei are good, PP links good, very good. So yeah, I've got no moans. I don't know all the ins and outs of all these things because, like I say, my main purpose in life was aerials and satellites, and I've come to this side of things because of narrowboat holidays, and uh, I expect to live on one eventually. So, Who? is the best broadband provider when cruising the canals? Sorry, there isn't one. It's wherever the signal comes in. 
And that's why I said, going back to what we we're saying to start with, if you use this app as voters and start correlating the information, uh, what I would say is it's probably not O2, strangely enough. And I say that because O2 had the job of putting the masks up for the police radio system, the, their te first digital Tetra system. So the coverage had to be brilliant over all the populated areas. So the police could go and nab you and talk to each other and all that. Is it worth putting a broadband aerial on a pole while mauled up? There's another technical aspect to that. Um, when, when you're transmitting, there's a Fresnel zone. It's a bit like a, a Zeppelin shape thing. If the uh, aerial is close to the boat, uh, it will detract from the power being sent out and it can halve its signal just by being close to the metalwork of the boat. Um, and that will apply to if it was close down close to the water as well. So if it's rained up, this Fresnel zone uh, becomes clear and you get a clear transmission. Can you, you use mains booster plugs on an arrowboat to extend the range? You can. Um, I was just trying to think really, you, would it be necessary if, if you put the router in? The routers should be in open space anyway. And theoretically, that should be able to radiate out, but there's nothing stopping you plugging it in other than battery drainage. That would be my concern. Since this recording was taking place with Doug, he has come back to me with a couple of other recommendations. Firstly, what is fast becoming my favourite app, Open Signal, apart from doing the standard speed test, you can either select all or just one of the four main broadband providers and see their coverage in your locality. If you prefer to do this via a PC, then this website, signalchecker.co.uk, is an excellent source for obtaining information on coverage for all the main providers. This vlog is not sponsored in any way and I'd like to thank Pointin for giving permission for use of their images. Finally I would like to thank once again Doug Randall from Signa Aerials for providing all the technical data and the information contained in this vlog. <laughs> Well, brilliant. Thank you, Doug Randall of Signet Aerials Weymouth. Thank you so much for all that technical information. Now, can I just say one thing? Please don't bombard me with comments about technical issues. I am not a technical person in respect of mobile broadband. All I have done is submit the questions that I received to Doug. He's the expert and he's the one that has the answers. So if you feel it necessary to ask any technical questions, please do contact Doug. Uh, the description below will contain all his contact details. It will also con contain all the links and the apps and the website that we have talked about during our um, vlog just now. Great. Well, today is a very special day for me and whilst you are enjoying this uh, lovely technical vlog, I'll be down the pub. I'll be down the pub with a few mates, socially distanced of course, having um, a lovely drink and a catch-up and this is a one particular um, meet that I've been very much looking forward to. It is the first time, the very first time, 
that the Forgo narrowboat in live crew will have been together in one place. And Alan uh, from My Narrowboat Venture, I have to thank you specifically for making the journey up here uh, to uh, see us because you're the one that had to travel the farthest. But thank you so much. Ah, it's going to be great. <laughs> Uh, whilst I'm talking about thank yous, thank you my lovely subscribers, all the new ones and all those that have been with me oh, right the way from the start. You are so wonderful. Thank you so much. I do so appreciate your comments and I so appreciate uh, you viewing my vlogs. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I say, seem to be saying this every week but my Facebook family just seems to be growing and I'm only just short of a thousand um, uh, members of it. So if you've not already joined my Facebook family and you would like to, then please do uh, contact me, send in that um, request. Let's see if we can hit the thousand today. That would be a marvellous treat for me. Sorry? What's the special occasion? Ah, oh, well, you have to know what the special occasion is. <laughs> when I was a kid, it used to involve candles. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how many today. Anyway, uh, it's back to a normal cruising vlog next week. Thank you all so much for joining me on this one. And I look forward to catching up with you next week. So until then, please do look after yourselves. Have a terrific week. May the sun shine on you. May your health blossom. And whatever else you're doing this week, I wish you a good one. Ta-da.